Hey there, and welcome to this week's Ask Me Anything session, where I am responding to all your questions about the publishing industry and writing a better book. I've loved seeing all the comments you've been leaving, so keep them coming, and I'm doing my best to get through as many as I can. I have to give the obligatory like and subscribe spiel, so please do so if you haven't already. And also, I have a freebie in the description that I want you to check out if you haven't already. It is my free story self-assessment worksheet that is going to help you identify the strengths and weaknesses in your story so that you can figure out how to take it to the next level. It's also going to sign you up for my newsletter that is launching soon with exclusive tips and resources. With all that out of the way, let's dive in to the questions today. We have some great ones on deck. The first question here is a deceivingly simple one. Who are the most reputable literary agents? Now, there are too many literary agents in the industry for me to get into specific names in this video. There are also tons of different agencies out there, ranging from huge talent agencies to boutique literary agencies, supporting just one or a couple of agents. But I will give you some strategies and tips for how to check and verify the reputability of an agent you are interested in querying. The best source is Publishers Marketplace which is an industry website, news source, and database that posts all of the deals that an agent and an editor at a publishing house conducts. So every single book that gets acquired by a publishing house will be posted there with a blurb saying who the agent is, who the editor is, and what imprint purchased it, along with usually a brief description of the book itself. Now, this is a paid service, so I would only sign up for a limited trial, say, while you're querying, then what you're going to do is pop in the names of all the agents you are interested in querying and see the recent book deals that they have done. Check that they have made deals at major publishing houses and that they've made deals recently, you know, within the past year. If they've been dormant for a while, that could be a red flag that maybe they're not ready to take on more clients. Or if they have not done many deals, or if they have only done deals with what you perceive as smaller houses versus part of the big five, then that can all help you understand their reputability. Their website should also have a list of the books that the agency and the specific agent has helped to publish. So I would definitely check those out as well. Go to the Amazon pages of those books and check how many reviews they have, check if they've gotten any media coverage. All of that is going to help you assess if that agent has done major book deals and could potentially offer that same support to you. The next question here also relates to querying, which is, can you help with websites to find literary agents in the UK and Canada? So the biggest database that I am aware of that covers US, UK, and Canadian agents is Query Tracker. You can go into that database and search agents by countries. So that's really your one-stop shop in my understanding, that is the most comprehensive database in the industry across all of those countries. Next question here. I have read in a book regarding self-editing and I also heard in some YouTube videos that in a dialogue as a speaker attribution, he said, she said, you should only use the verb said and not verbs such as he, she demanded, offered, inquired, etc. because when you use other verbs, you draw attention to the dialogue mechanic rather than the dialogue itself and the verb say is considered inconspicuous. The thing is that in the fantasy genre, I have seen in most of the books written by famous authors that they tend to use different speaker attributions, though admittedly sparingly. Should I stick to the he, she said rule or what I am seeing reading in the contemporary fantasy literature? So you've pointed to one of those pieces of writing advice that is commonly proliferated out in the online space and in writing communities. However, the truth is there is never just one way to write. There is never one right way to write. There is never a rule that can't be broken. That's why in my channel, I do try to give tips that are generally applicable and make sense in most cases and can apply to a wide variety of genres, etc. But I try to veer away from statements like never do this, always do this, always do that. When it comes to dialogue tags, personally in the types of genres I am reading and the contemporary publishing landscape, I do find that more and more writers are leaning toward what you said 
in using just he said, she said, and maybe sparingly using something more dramatic like exclaimed when the situation warrants it. I find that approach to be completely fine. What I find highly distracting and honestly it looks amateurish in most cases is if every single line of dialogue has a tag whether that be he said she said or he exclaimed she whispered etc 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 it's all about the placement of the dialogue tags so that as you said you don't draw the reader's attention to them in an unnecessary and distracting way so i would say as you go back through your manuscript a take a close look at the dialogue tags you are using does that line require a different tag than said? If not, just stick with said. There's nothing wrong with it. The reader isn't gonna be craving an exclaimed or a whispered. Secondly, definitely look at the placement and the frequency of the dialogue tags because often you don't need them, especially if the reader already understands who is speaking to whom. However, in longer dialogue exchanges, you are gonna to need to punctuate it a few times with dialogue tags but do not let the dialogue tags overwhelm the dialogue itself. Next question here is, would publishers accept books that feature potentially divisive political or religious messages? This is a tough call. The key here, if your book, especially if it's nonfiction, takes a really strong stance on a political or social issue or has a really strong religious message, you are going to need to find a publisher that matches whatever ideology you are putting forth in the book. So in the case of religious books, especially the Christian market, typically a faith-based book that you are pushing a specific spiritual religious message is going to be better suited for a Christian publisher versus one of the main big five publishing houses. Because remember that all of the imprints at the big five are trying to find a general, wide, commercial appeal. And if you have a really strong message that is only going to appeal to a subset of readers, then it's likely going to be less appealing to them because they are not going to be able to sell as many copies because they're only targeting a specific group. So I would say just vet your publishers very carefully and make sure you find a publisher that is publishing books that also share your message, which may mean that you need to go to a smaller or indie publisher or self-publish versus go through the big five. Here's another question. Is there going to be publishing companies that lean more toward gay romance novels versus others? What we've seen in the publishing landscape, especially in recent years, is that the big five are publishing more and more books featuring gay characters, especially in the romance space. The book Red, White, and Royal Blue is a great example of that, and it reached multiple bestseller lists. Now, if you are trying to go the traditional publishing route, keep in mind that your literary agent is going to be the one connecting you with publishing houses, so they will be your best source of intel for which publishers are going to be best fit for your novel. That said, if you are looking at independent publishers on your own, then I would recommend looking at the repertoire of books that they have published in the past and seeing if there are any other gay romance novels. And if there are, then that's a great sign that they could be interested in yours. Also make sure you check their list of genres that they're interested in. There are more and more publishers these days specifically looking for novels featuring LGBTQ characters, which means that they could be particularly interested in your story. I hope you found this Ask Me Anything session interesting and helpful. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Go down into the description and grab that free story self-assessment if you haven't. I promise it's going to help you take your story to the next level. Continue to leave me additional questions in the comments here. This is what I use as my cue when I am going through them. And I love to see what you all have questions about and what you all are working on. Thank you so much for watching and happy writing.